guys, welcome to my kitchen. I'm Nikki Sizemore. Today we are making easy steak burrito bowls with an avocado crema. So this recipe was inspired by the chicken burrito bowls in my cookbook, Build a Bowl. They're actually the ones that are on the cover. So I adapted the recipe using skirt steak instead. And not only that, but we're gonna amp up the flavor a few different ways. First, we're gonna rub the skirt steak with a spice rub, and that's gonna give it so much flavor really quickly. Then we're gonna pan sear it in a cast iron skillet. You could grill it instead. After the steak comes out of the skillet, we're gonna cook a slew of onions and peppers and sweet corn and garlic. And that is gonna be a beautiful vegetable accompaniment to the steak. And then drizzle everything with an avocado crema. It's a creamy avocado sauce. And it's gonna tie all of the different components together. This is one of our favorite weeknight meals. I hope it becomes one of yours as well. So stick around, let's head to the kitchen. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button below so you don't miss out on any of my easy from scratch fast recipes. The first thing we're going to do is make the avocado crema. So put a garlic clove in a mini food processor and we're just going to process this until it's finely chopped. Now for some cilantro. I'm going to add some cilantro leaves. I'm also using those upper stems. They're totally edible and they taste good and it's less work, so why not use them? I love using my food processor, by the way, for quick no-cook sauces. I've got a slew of them in my book, Buildable. This is a mini food processor, but you could use a larger version as well. Now for the avocado. Now I like to buy unripe avocados that are hard to the touch and let them ripen at home at room temperature for a couple of days. I find they ripen so much more consistently and they don't get all bruised up on the way home. However, if you wanna make this the day of, you will need to buy a ripe avocado. Now just scoop out the fruit. And yes, avocado is a fruit. <laughs> and then we're going to add the sour cream. The sour cream is gonna give this sauce a wonderful creaminess as well as a little tang. Now some fresh lime juice. Always use the fresh stuff, guys. It just tastes so much better. And then some hot sauce. The hot sauce is gonna add some heat, obviously, but also a little bit more acid. Season well with salt and pepper. And then a little bit of water is going to help to thin this sauce out. All right, we're almost done. Let's process this until it is smooth. You're definitely going to want to stop and scrape down the sides. Easy sauces like this can really transform an ordinary meal into something special. And by the way, this sauce is also awesome over tacos. The most important step is to taste the sauce. I'm going to add a little bit more water and a little bit more hot sauce, but this is your sauce and it should taste good to you. So the most important thing you can do is taste it. You wanna make sure there's enough seasoning and that the flavors are balanced. Place a piece of plastic wrap directly on the surface of the sauce and then pop it in the fridge. And you can make this up to a day in advance. Next, let's make the spice rub for the steak. I'm going to use one tablespoon of chili powder. This is just a chili powder blend, a classic spice you find at any supermarket. A teaspoon of ground cumin. Add a little bit of smokiness. A teaspoon of ground coriander. I love the fruitiness of coriander. It's one of my favorite spices. And then the secret ingredient is a quarter teaspoon of ground cinnamon, which might sound crazy, but it's gonna give this steak amazing flavor. Last but not least, we have a touch of light brown sugar. That's going to help the steak to caramelize and give it an amazing, sweet, savory flavor. This spice rub is also awesome on chicken and you can totally use chicken here instead of steak if you prefer. Speaking of steak, we are using skirt steak. It is my favorite cut because it is so flavorful and so easy to cook. I like to cut it into thirds, and there's a few reasons for this. A, it's gonna be much easier to work with. You can see how long this steak is. B, these steaks are all different thicknesses, so by cutting it into thirds, you can cook each to its appropriate level of doneness. The thin ones will be done sooner. And then C, it gives me the ability to cook the different pieces to different internal temperatures. So my kids prefer a medium steak, while my husband and I prefer medium rare, and we can all get what we want. <laughs> You can see I seasoned these generously with salt and pepper, and now I'm gonna sprinkle one tablespoon of the spice rub over the steaks. We're going to use the rest of the spice rub on the vegetables, so don't use it all. 
flip the steaks over and then we'll season them up on the other side. I think one of the biggest mistakes people make when cooking meat is to not use enough salt and pepper. Don't be shy, it is so important for flavor. I use kosher salt, by the way, which is much milder than table salt. Now you see I put this little piece of parchment down, that's just to keep my cutting board clean, so I'm gonna throw that away and get started on my veggies. We have a red onion here. I like to trim the top and the bottom, then cut it in half, and at this point it's just a lot easier to peel and then we're going to thinly slice the onion. The trick with knife skills is simply to practice. <laughs> the more you practice using your chef's knife and using good form, the easier and quicker it gets. Although I have the benefit of fast forward in this edit. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna cut up my red bell pepper. First thing I do is cut off the top and bottom and slice those up. Now, cut a slit through the bell pepper and then run your knife along the inside of it, taking out the ribs and the seeds. This, I find, is the quickest, most efficient way to get rid of those ribs and seeds. Now we can slice up the red pepper. We are also using a poblano pepper in these bowls. I love the flavor of poblano peppers. They are mild, but a little bit more complex than bell peppers. That being said, if you can't find one, you can use a small bell pepper instead, or half of a regular size one. So I like to pull out the seeds, and then we'll slice it up. Last but not least, we are adding four garlic cloves because who doesn't love garlic? So just give them a smash, take off the skins, and we're gonna leave them whole. That way we can cook them along with the other vegetables and they won't burn. All right guys, let's get cooking. I've been heating up my cast iron skillet and I added a tablespoon of oil, just swirl the pan to coat it, and then arrange those steak pieces in the pan. If your pan isn't big enough, you can do this in batches. You can also grill these instead of cooking them in a cast iron skillet. However, we are going to cook the vegetables in the same skillet, so you will lose a little bit of that flavor if you cook the steak on the grill. Once the steaks are nicely browned and caramelized on the bottom, give them a flip. Skirt steak cooks really quickly, so you only need about three minutes a side. However, as I mentioned, some pieces are going to be thicker than others so feel free to pull off the thinner pieces earlier. And don't be afraid to move the steak around in the pan as it cooks. You're just gonna get a more even caramelization. All right, transfer these to a cutting board. We are going to let them rest while we cook off all of those veggies. I'm using the same pan. You don't wanna wash it because all of those little brown bits on the bottom of the pan from the steak are going to flavor the veggies. Season these with salt and pepper. And then we'll cook these, stirring occasionally until they're browned and tender. I cook them over medium high heat, but you can always adjust the heat if they start to brown too quickly. Now we're going to add a cup of frozen corn and the rest of that spice mixture. Cook just for another minute or two until the spices smell amazing and the corn is heated through. Now remove the pan from the heat and we're going to add some chopped fresh cilantro as well as some lime juice. You wanna do this off the heat so that you retain that freshness and the brightness. Just look at those colors. It is time to slice our skirt steak. The grain and skirt steak runs crosswise. So if you were to slice the steak crosswise, you're gonna get tough pieces of meat. You actually want to slice it lengthwise. This is another reason why cutting the steak into thirds is really beneficial because it's much easier to cut these smaller pieces lengthwise than it would that whole foot long skirt steak. Okay guys, it's time to build our bowls. I'm using rice today, but you could use brown rice. You could use quinoa, millet. You could even use romaine lettuce, whatever you like. Pile in the steak and the veggies and then you can either drizzle the sauce over the bowls. I'm gonna kind of spoon it along the edge. I like to add shredded romaine lettuce and some crunchy tortilla chips, and these steak burrito bowls are just packed with flavor and texture. And you guys, that creamy avocado sauce just ties everything together. I'm going to drizzle a little bit of hot sauce over top, and then I am diving in. 
Thank you guys so much for tuning in. You can get the full recipe in the description notes below. I can't wait to hear what you think. And don't forget to subscribe for more tips and recipes from my From Scratch Fast Kitchen. I will see you next time. And for a slew of other One Bowl meals, be sure to check out Buildable, which I will link to in the description notes below.